I just want to enjoy my spot right now, enjoy where I am, and enjoy that I'm world number five. Uh, I believe in myself and I believe that I belong where I am. I used to be the underdog, I used to play matches really comfortably, but now I'm expecting myself to win these battles. I'm actually, I want more and I'm actually, I'm actually so eager to reach world number one and I'm not going to rest until I reach that spot. Hanya, thank you for joining us and agreeing to come and sit with us, so we really appreciate it. And what better place um, to have this conversation, the scene, the same tournament where you had that spectacular win earlier this year, last season, but this year of course. Um, how has it been for you coming back to this tournament, it's obviously um, in your home country, but going back onto that court, um, you know, the last time that you were on there obviously you had the, the biggest win of your career. Uh, well, first of all, I love playing in Egypt in front of my family, friends, and definitely having my coaches right in front of me. But uh, coming back to the court where I first had my f biggest win, uh, it's definitely it's definitely different and it's definitely very special to me. Um, I have lots of memories on this court and uh, in this club, so um, I was really looking forward to this tournament. I was training really hard for this tournament. I was waiting for my first round. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think it's a different challenge for me. Uh, I've never been a defending champion before in a in a in a major tournament. Uh, I know this is not a World Series tournament, but still, I'm, I'm the defending champion. I I had this title uh, last March. So yeah, I had a very good run last March. Um, very tough battles, starting with Kami in the last 16, and then SJ and Amanda and Noor she being yeah. in the final. So, so yeah, definitely, definitely something uh, to to remember. Yeah, um, and now obviously the Black Ball was also the last event before everything went horribly wrong. Um, the tour was suspended for such a long time. What was it like for you coming into that kind of form? Probably you know the best you've ever played, the best result you'd ever had for it then to just so suddenly all come to an end and you know with no idea when you were going to be back on court and playing tournaments again. At the end I looked at it as a very good ending for the season maybe but um, of course I had the momentum and uh, I was really improving in, in this period so I wanted to keep playing and I wanted to keep uh, the same level I reached. Uh, I didn't want to like uh, stop the momentum. Um, but gladly after we came back I still managed to, to keep going and I, I like I kept performing the same way so it was it didn't affect me that much. Uh, in fact, I took it as a positive way that I ended the season really well because I could have played other tournaments after Black Ball and then didn't end well. So, um, yeah. so yeah, it, it went well for me and that was all I wanted. Um, now, we talk a lot in commentary about how quickly the, we feel this has happened um, with you being, you know, starting last season as a very dangerous um, player for the, for the top players, but we wouldn't have thought of you as someone who was going to win a big event yet. Um, and that rise is, just seems to have happened overnight. Does it feel like it's happened quickly to you or was it just everything going exactly according to plan? Well, um, I don't know, but I think I've been training really hard. Uh, I believe in myself and I believe that I belong where I am. And that's something that's definitely giving me confidence that it's not happening quickly. It's just that's what I deserve because I'm, I'm trying my hard, I trying my best to to reach this level and um, maybe it seems for people that it's quickly but I think for me that it, um, I'm actually I want more and I'm actually I'm actually so eager to reach world number one and uh, I'm not gonna rest until I reach that spot so definitely even if it seems quickly for people I don't think it's quickly for me. Um, now obviously for someone um, your age you seem incredibly, to me, seem incredibly self-assured and have a lot of belief. I mean you have to have that, that, that confidence to be able to do what you've already done. Um, in terms of the next step, getting into the, the, um, you know, the, the very top, the top three, winning big tournaments like um, a World Championships or a British Open, getting to world number one, do you, do you, have, do you have that belief that you can get there and, and what sort of time frame are you thinking? Um, well, of course, I do believe that I can do that. Um, time framing, I can't really give you a timing. Um, as I said, I'm trying to, to enjoy where I am now and enjoy because 
it's all part of the journey and I don't want to rush things because rushing things might make me go backwards so um, so I'm really happy of having this spot being a world number five um, I want to enjoy it and definitely reaching world number one and winning world championships is gonna come but it comes at a price and this price is gaining experience and learning and and hopefully I can make it as soon as I can. <laughs> Just talking about the, the environment that you've grown up up and we obviously talk a lot about you know the rise of the Egyptian players and just you know how many incredible young players there seem to be and, and it's just a constant influx of these amazing talented um, young players and you've obviously grown up right amongst that but you've also had players like Rani Malwalili, Nora Tayeb, Nora Shabini to kind of look up to as well so how much do you think that environment has contributed to your success already? Uh, well, it has contributed a lot to my success, to be honest. Um, before playing against these top players, against Raneem, against uh, Omne Abdel Awi and uh, Nicole David, I, I had the privilege of training with them in Cairo when I was a junior. Um, I still remember Raneem and Nur Taib when they, they would just give me like an easy free love. And then one day I find them texting me, asking me for a hit in Cairo, and I'm just like... A, 17 years old and I'm so excited I'm so happy to go and train with them so definitely that's something that maybe g gave me an advantage um, I learned a lot from them I uh, I started training with Raneem's coach Haitha Maifat when I was 16 years old and she was already a world champion so um, so that I used to watch her during her practice hits and I used to learn from her and that's definitely something that gave me so much lessons um, yeah, at the same time, I think that when I was playing against those who are my age, it's different. It's kind of different. It's ma it makes me a little bit nervous, a little bit stressed. But when I play against Raneem Elwalili or Anwar Taib, I felt like I was really releasing all the pressure and I was playing really well. And that's something that kind of gave me lessons on how to how to play against them, of course, because they were the one who had the pressure on. So just going back to your junior career, obviously it was very, very successful, um, but you did have those losses um, in finals against um, Rowan El Arabi, who, you know, if you look at her career, she's doing incredibly well. She sat at 14 in the world, I think, um, a similar age to you. Um, but at that point, you were probably doing better on the PSA tour, but still losing in juniors. Do you think there's a difference between the junior squash and the senior squash that was somehow maybe you felt more pressure um, playing in junior finals as opposed to being on the tour, as you said, more of an underdog? Uh, yes, well, definitely in my junior matches against Rowan, I was, most of them I was the the seed to win and that gave me that put a lot of pressure on me and didn't make me play the best squash I had at the time I was obviously so young to deal with kind of pressure um, I would say the experience I had during my junior career gave me so much lessons to to help me reach where I am right now um, I heard this so many times from many people and that made me really move on from my junior losses uh, and the message was that it doesn't matter where what you did in your junior career. Some junior players never won World Junior, and still they they are World Champions. So um, so yeah, going to my last World Junior uh, final, uh, I was going to the tournament and thinking that this tournament is not mine. I'm not gonna win this tournament. Every time I go, I mess it up. So um, so yeah, and then I won the final World Junior. I I played and. Uh, and yeah, and, and still, and still I, th I thought of it that it doesn't matter even if I don't win it, it's a different journey. Some World Juniors stop after World Juniors and go pursue their college uh, and university degree. So um, I thought that it doesn't matter what I did in the juniors. And, um, and definitely right now I think that um, I'm doing pretty well and that's something that I'm proud of, of course. Yeah, so that took a little bit of pressure off the fact that you were already kind of half focused on the professional tour. That took a bit of pressure off that the big final in juniors. Yes, definitely. I think I learned a lot from the pressure I, 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 I didn't manage to face during my junior career and I tried to I tried to move on from this and learn how to how to face it when I when when I playing against someone that I feel like I have to win or that I everyone is expecting me to win that match or I'm expecting myself at least to beat this player. Um, 
I learned how to deal with such situation and um, and yeah, I was able to um, to finally get a win against Rowan last season uh, for the first time after my World Juniors uh, finals against her. And what do you think the main differences are in terms of your game? If you look at the way you were playing, even you know just two years ago in your junior career, what are those things that you are doing just that bit better that has allowed you to get to the point now where you're number five in the world? Um, well, definitely my squash has gotten better, of course. Um, but if I'm gonna say something that really helped me go, go and rise up into the rankings, I, I would say my my fitness level and physically, I I definitely have 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 improved physically. When when I wasn't playing my best squash, I think I recovered from that with my with my fitness and and how I I used to pick up all the all the shots. So um, so yeah, I would say I would say my physicality maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but it, but it also feels like that the Egyptian girls mostly tend to um, get on quite well, um, and I think we, you know we talk a lot about how Renim El Olili and Nora Shabini would you know they would sometimes share, they would practice together, even though they were such big rivals. Um, do you find that that, that that's quite common um, amongst Egyptian players that you all sort of sh share information rather than seeing each other purely as rivals, but also just want all of you to do quite well and you know those older players have ob obviously rather than seeing you as a threat they've wanted to help you and wanted you to do well yes of course um, definitely that's something I shared with Ranim Lulili and Noor Taib um, after uh, Noor's announcement I just messaged her and I, I really thanked her a lot for so many things uh, during my junior career when I had so many upsets in the finals I can never forget the messages I've received from Noor and how she pushed me forward, even though she knew that I was coming up and how I, I was going to be a threat to her one day. Uh, she never hesitated and she was definitely there. Um, also, Ranim Lulili, um, in the last World Juniors, I, uh, I faced a little bit of difficulty with my grandmom uh, passing away during the tournament. So also, Ranim was really there, messaging me after after every round. So. Um, no, we don't look at each other as rivalries outside the court, of course. Inside is completely different. Each player wants to win and each player is going to do the, what they can to win. Yeah. Um, in terms of the future, um, obviously you're still only 20 years old. You've already achieved um, quite a lot in a short period of time. But I'm sure, you know, for, for my era, 20, you were still really developing as a player, as a person, almost trying to find your identity um, both on the court and off the court. Um, what are the sort of, are there specific areas that you're working on to, to, to get that next step up um, to improve as a player? Oh, um, don't want to reveal it, don't want to reveal my <laughs> secrets, but, um, but if I would say something that I want to work on is definitely how to deal with the pressure I am I'm facing right now because um, I used to be the underdog I used to play matches really comfortably and I didn't mind being too loved down and then coming back and then I used to play really well against all the top players but now I'm expecting myself to win these battles so um, I just want to enjoy my spot right now enjoy where I am and enjoy that I'm world number five and definitely world number one will come at the right timing so this is something I'm trying to work on and hopefully I can just ignore all the pressure and keep going. <laughs> you seem like you're dealing with it pretty well so far but how difficult is it to prepare for a you know for a season that you, that you where you don't know what it's going to look like normally you'll have a, a schedule of tournaments that you'll be able to prepare for you'll know when there's going to be the big ones like the British Open and um, the World Championships whereas it's all you know a little bit up in the air how difficult has that been? Well, it's really difficult for us players. I, I'm not going to talk personally because I think all players are facing the same problem. Not knowing when or the exact dates for the tournaments is something that's bothering all players because we don't know when to when to train really hard and when we have to just slow down a little bit so the body doesn't just burn up. So um, I, s I think this is something all players are facing and hopefully, hopefully we can, the situation gets better and everything uh, everything gets solved quicker but the PSA is doing what they can do and it's definitely that's the best they can do right now so um, we, we have to deal with it somehow. Yeah well you seem like you've been dealing with it pretty well so far um, considering your age it's quite incredible it's been very very um, it's been amazing really to watch um, your 
very quick evolution um, since last season. Very enjoyable, I have to say, as a commentator to watch your matches. It's been a pleasure to sit down and talk to you. Um, thank you so much for taking the time.